What's happening, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, I know I'm dressed right. Yeah, I'm right. It's a weekend. Yeah, about to kill it. <laughs> Thank you very much for appreciate. If you appreciate the way I'm dressed, just just do this. You know. Thanks a lot. To beautiful favor to have you with me. I see you from all over the place. You know the drill. I love you very much. I'm Zach. I don't know who you are, but certainly we're going to like each other because we are the same people. Okay, so if this is your first time, feel free. There's a button right here. I think it's called subscribe. Please subscribe so we can see each other every day. Great. So we have a situation here. I don't know. How do you feel about double citizenship? How do you feel about that? I mean, you're born from one country and you go to another country and you happen to live in that country and you adopt the nationality. Let me rather say they accept you or whatever that is. You have double nationality. How do you feel about that? Which country do you belong to? Can we say you belong to the new country? Because if you really wanted the first country that bad, you would have just said who you were. Or should we say you still belong to the first country where you came from because it's part of your culture, part of your natural self? Well, we have a situation here, fellas. You know, <laughs> the world never ceases to surprise us. The 49-year-old man from Morocco who obtained his French citizenship in 2021 could lose it. Why could he lose it? A man from Morocco living in France for many years could lose his French nationality. Why? Because the prosecutor in Paris says he was condemned, he was convicted of adultery in Morocco. So he's French in France, he's got the nationality, he's got double nationality, he's Moroccan and French, and he's been convicted in Morocco for adultery. Therefore, the French people say, you know what, because you've been convicted in Morocco uh, for adultery, we're going to script or strip you of the French nationality. 49-year-old man born in Morocco who became French in 2021 could lose his French nationality, a decision demanded by Paris prosecutor's office because the 40-year-old man was convicted in Morocco for adultery, he reported. This is crazy, man. They, they, <laughs> this is crazy. So the man got married in February 2028 and has two children with his French wife. Okay, so he's got a white wife. Anyway, then he waited for several years before applying for citizenship. After 12 years of marriage, then he applied for citizenship. Why did he do that? Because most of the time when Africans go to Europe and they happen to fall in love genuinely with a European woman, European institutions tend to think that Africans are just looking for ways to stay in Europe or get nationality. And this man clearly said, you know what, I'm going to show you that this is not the reason why I'm here. He waited 12 years before applying. And literally a year and a half after applying and being accepted or gifted the citizenship, they're trying to take it away from him. Why? Again, adultery, which is not a legal issue in France. I mean, adultery is not a crime in France. French people are some of the most adulterous people in the world, I'm just saying. And it's just crazy to see this person being put under pressure for something very stupid. So the man has been condemned six months in prison for adultery. I'm sure you're asking yourself a question. How can you be condemned for adultery? Yes, Morocco is a Muslim country, mainly. Okay? And the laws and the rules are different from your country, perhaps. And you can be condemned for adultery, meaning seeing another woman who's not your woman, at least officially. Also, I need to tell you that Muslims in some laws are allowed to have many wives. You know, they can have as much as four wives. It's nothing new. It has happened for the longest time. Uh, in fact, many people in many areas of the world had many wives. Okay, just be okay with it. Don't, I understand you want to fight, all that stuff, but just relax. Because the bottom line is, uh, the idea of uh, a single man for a single woman is an idea that's imported to many people in the world. So in many places in the world, it was absolutely normal to have many wives, provided that you provide every need to them equally. And many people have done that too. And it's never really been an issue. I mean, I remember myself growing up next to a family that were polygamous. The father had two wives. And trust me, the two wives were the best friends in the whole world. So whenever you saw wife number one, you would clearly see the wife number two a few meters later. They were always together. They were some of the most stable families I've ever experienced because I went to their family and I stayed there, I think, for two nights. Very, very, very peaceful. So wife number one can reprimand the child of wife number two with no issue. Wife number two can reprimand the child of wife number one and they call each other mama, mama, mama. There's no uh, uh, second wife, but no, it's mama because 
That's the way they were brought up. So I can certainly tell you that the reason why you perceive life the way you do, it's because you were born in an institution that tells you you must have one wife or one woman. And I'm not saying to you you should adopt polygamous. I'm just trying to relate to you an information of respect of other people's culture. Other people's culture allow them to have many partners in a very sane, in a very clean space. Having many partners doesn't mean you can now go have number third, number fourth, number six. It means you are officially known by the institution. So this is just an under bracket to show you that Morocco uh, can be very balanced depending on what side you are. If you do not do things properly, you're going to be sent in jail for adultery. But if you do things as a Muslim, because in Islam you can have many wives, you can have four wives, then you're going to be respected for that. So whatever happens about this man in Morocco, does it have anything to do with Paris? My question is this. How can you really feel the sense of patriotism toward the country that always threatens you to take away the nationality? Because this is not the first time. You remember a few months back, we spoke about Benzema. Benzema, who was threatened, uh, you know, they said they were going to take his nationality away from him. Benzema is a French-born Algerian man. So his parents were both Algerian and he was born in France. And Benzema is a great football player. He's played many, many times for French people, at least for the entertainment. He was praised all along the way, all along his career. But just because he made a comment supporting people that French people do not like, they came forward. Many politicians said they must take his nationality away. In fact, let me tell you, he said, let's support people who are suffering in the Middle East. You know which people we're talking about. Some of the French government people say we must take his nationality away from him. You shouldn't be French anymore. And it's very sad that you can be threatened at this level. You were born in France. France is everything you know. Even though you come from Algeria, at least your parents do. You know everything about France. Food, the culture, the music, the studies, the people, everything. And at all the age, being told we're going to take your nationality away from you. The question is, are you really a French person? Can you really become a French person? Or European for that matter? Because this doesn't limit itself to Benzema. We know the story of Ozil. Ozil was a great football player. He played for Germany. Tremendous athlete. A great football player of Turkish descent. Okay, guys, football means soccer. Soccer in the world for American people. Soccer is football. Okay, so when I say football, I'm actually talking about soccer. Ozil is a great soccer player, if you prefer. Originally from Turkish, but born in Germany. He was criticized because he took a picture with the Turkish president. Let me repeat myself. This man is originally from Turkey, but he was born in Germany. Okay. Now, the Turkish president happened to visit Germany and he decided to take a picture with the Turkish president and he was criticized by the people of Germany. Why? Because Germany and the president of Turkey were going through some difficult time at that specific moment. What does that have to do with Ozil, the man who has played soccer for the German national team, who has represented bravely Germany against other countries, just because he took a picture with his president or the president of his father and mother? That's the reason why they called him name and they did all the things they did against him? This is what Ozil said. The treatment I received from the German Football Association and many other people no longer makes me want to wear the national jersey. That's when he was giving up. And later on, he announced that he was leaving the German selection because of remarks that made him feel unworthy. So he decided to leave the German national team because of the menace he received. And this doesn't stop at Germany. There's another player named Lukaku. Lukaku is from, originally from the Congo. I think he's lived his whole life, at least in Belgium. And this is what he had to say. He said, when things are good, articles and journalists say Lukaku, the striker from Belgium. When things go wrong, they say, oh, Lukaku, the Congolese striker of origin. So they remind you who you are when you do negative or when you don't do so good. But when you do great, then they want to embrace you and praise you. Again, fellas, I think we need to think about it. Can you ever really belong to another country, especially a country from another place, another continent, a European country, you being from another place? Can you ever say that I truly am, I'm, yeah, I'm being accepted forever? Or it's just a way for them to control people. It, you know, make you feel good or make you believe that they live in a sort of a democracy or in a sort of acceptance system that in reality, when you do anything they're not happy about, they will quickly remind you that you don't belong. There is another guy from Congo, an MP, I believe, a young man. I can't remember really what his name was. It was at a time where, you know, many people come from Africa trying to traverse the Mediterranean Sea, trying to reach Europe, hoping to get a better life. 
And at that specific time, France was discussing about how to do about these people that are coming in very, very much in Europe. And this young man, this man originally from the Congo that was an MP in France, he said, we need to allow people to come into France. The idea was to stop this boat from crossing the Mediterranean Sea. And this young man said, you know what? We all have an origin. We all came from somewhere. He was an MP in France. Let's not stop the boat. Let's allow these people to come and have a better life. And he was quickly faced with the harshest response from the parliament. They quickly reminded him that he doesn't belong there. And it was by favor that he had an opportunity to sit next to them. Les personnes secourues se trouvent dans une situation d'urgence absolue. Les prévisions météo indiquent une détérioration significative du climat. Pas du tout. C'est violence. Oui. Quel est le député qui vient de prononcer cette phrase Pardon Je fais une suspension de séance de 5 minutes. There is one aspect of France and Morocco that many people don't see. In reality, they've been through some turmoil for the past couple of years. Uh, France had asked Morocco to call back its people because there are many Moroccans that live in France that are illegal or maybe came legally then did not extend the visas and overstayed. France asked the Moroccan government to take those people back to Morocco. The Morocco government didn't react to that demand. Morocco was not happy that France accused them of spying on them. They were not happy. Then later on, I don't know if you remember, Morocco was going through a very difficult time when they had earthquake happening in the country. And many people, it was a very sad moment. Many countries came forward offering help to Morocco. Morocco received them. But then France made a statement through Macron. You know, Macron, when Macron is acting like Macron, he says something along the lines of, oh, well, Morocco knows what we can offer. If Morocco needs a quality offer or anything, they can just voice themselves, meaning they can just beg. They can just ask us for help, and we're going to help them. Now, let me put it this way for you. When somebody wants to help you, he comes forward and help. He doesn't ask you to ask them for help. That's exactly what Macron did that day. And that infuriated the king of Morocco in a really bad manner. And he openly said, I don't need help from anybody, especially not France. Please don't bring it. And on top of that, he did a tremendous job by trying to give some money to the people that lost their houses so they can rebuild their houses. He gave money for construction. He gave money for sustenance. He gave money for food to the people during that very harsh time, very difficult time Morocco was going through. So France wanting to deport Moroccans that were illegal in France back to Morocco, asked Morocco to call them back. Morocco did not react. So fellas, let me know once again, does this man deserve what he's living right now? Being condemned of adultery in another country and France wants to revoke his nationality. In fact, adultery is not a crime in France. People can do whatever they like. You can have 65 girlfriends. It's not a crime, provided that you are present in your household. Is that okay? Or again, are double nationalities a lie? Because as soon as you do something negative, they will take it away from you or quickly remind you that you do not belong. Can we say that double nationalities are genuine? Can you really become somebody from another country? Or the reality is, it's just a way to manipulate, a way to make you believe that you belong until you do something negative. Whether we quickly take it away from you or remind you that you don't belong. God bless.